Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Simon Wilde. Hi, Richard. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to see you. And uh, your exhibition is Action and Abstraction at Anala Art Advisory in Glenbrook in New South Wales. Um, and one of the things we, we must address, first of all, is the unconventionality in, in many ways of some of the materials that you utilise to create these works. What are some of the main materials and why have you chosen this direction? Well, the main thing is that um, instead of using canvas, like most painters, I use sheets of steel and sometimes sheets of copper. Um, the reasons for it are many and varied. There are many things that you can do with metal that you couldn't do with, with canvas. And, there's, and it's something that I came upon almost by chance. Um, many years ago, I um, went on a, a bicycle trip through Central Australia. And uh, in the long hours of, of riding solo through the desert, I, I composed a number of poems about the experience. And when I got back, I, I wanted to, to somehow create like an artwork incorporating this as a manuscript. And I was happened to find myself in a scrap metal yard and, and saw a rusty piece of steel lying around. And, and the, the color of that, I thought could be a good stand in for the colors of the desert. So, so that was, so I, I did a piece where I, I sort of wrote the manuscript on the steel and, and incorporated photos and stuff. And, and after that, I became very fascinated with the, with the medium. Um, and gradually over the years, uh, the work went from being sort of an exposition of poetry and photography to something which was the pure, more purely abstract paintings that you see in, in the current collection. So how did you develop the, the techniques for creating the visual works on this metal substrate? A process of trial and error. Um, and, and this is one of the things that is, is really key to my practice. I, I, I'll just get an idea. Well, I wonder what will happen if I do this. So, um, for example, one of, one of the main things I do is uh, use petrol as a thinner of oil paints and then ignite it with, with a flame. And you end up with this um, amazing sort of blackness shot through the colours. Um, and obviously, you couldn't possibly do that on a piece of canvas. However, putting it on a piece of steel, the steel doesn't burn up, um, and you end up with this amazing uh, effect. Um, other things that you can do is you use angle grinders or cutting wheels and things to score patterns into the, into the, the steel. And of course, when you use water-based um, pigments like inks or acrylics, um, then you get really interesting rust patterns which emerge, um, which also form part of the image. You mentioned uh, fire and, and the petrol, the use of petrol as a thinner, mm -hmm. and you don't only use it as a thinner, but you very much light it so that you get those effects. Yeah. <laughs> and there is also, uh, in the creation of your work, certainly in the past, there has been a, a strong performative element. You've created works in front of crowds of people. How important yes. has that sense of theatre been to your um, It's Look, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice to have, but not essential. So, I mean, most of my work I, I perform alone in the studio. However, when I was in Shanghai, and I was, you know, had a, had a public studio. It was, it was a really good thing to do to get people engaged in, in the process, and, and it's fun. I mean, you could, I, I, I would hire musicians and, and, and have, you know, I, I like to work to music anyway. But hey, if you've got a live band playing, it, it just makes the whole thing a whole lot more fun. Um, it's also a bit of a test of my skill. It's like, you know, it's all very well to do something in the privacy of your studio. But if you're doing it live and you've got to get it right, right there, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's more of a challenge. You mentioned uh, your workshop in Shanghai. Um, how important was that time in China and how influential was the cultural exchange? Um, it was a very influential Actually, I've been to China twice to, to, at the very beginning of my career and, and then sort of subsequently about 10 years later, I, I went there and spent time in Shanghai working on, on things. Um, funnily enough, it's not so much the cultural exchange that was, um, you know, important to my practice. It's, it's, it's more the type, different kinds of materials that you could get there. Um, as, as I think it's sort of fairly clear, my work is very much driven by the, the properties of the media that you're using. So... 
in China, you've got different gauges of steel or the, the different types of industrial paints have different properties. And so you end up with work which looks quite different than what you will get in Australia. Um, sometimes I would, I would incorporate elements into my, into my work which, were, which the Chinese audience could relate to better, such as, um, like I, I'd, I'd include drawing and things like that on, 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 a, on a bottom layer of paper. Um, which was not something that I had really tried to do in Australia, but you know, you, you try to you, you, you try to use use the materials which are at hand, and also do stuff which relates to the audience which is at hand as well. So, so uh, with that degree of flexibility about the drivers behind the visual appearance of the work. Mm -hmm. What would you therefore describe as for you some of the the themes? and drivers of the works that, that you're now creating or have built up over the years? Um, I like complexity. So um, you have layers upon layers. You, you kind of construct the image. So you, you put down the first layer and if that in itself is striking enough, then maybe it's finished, but maybe it needs something more. So you'll, you'll put down another layer and, and, and it will overlay what's underneath and then the, the fact that there's two or three or four or five layers, you end up with something which is hugely complex. Um, so it's a bit like a, like a Pollock or something like that. I mean, you, you know, the effect of a Jackson Pollock is on the one hand, it's an incredibly complex series of lines, but when you take it in all together, it's like calming. So I guess I sort of try to achieve that same sort of, you know, impact. Let's move to some of the specific works in this exhibition and perhaps you can give us a little more insight into the processes uh, and drivers behind those works. Um, let's look first of all at the work Darling Buds uh, and uh, that is a large work, over two metres uh, uh, in one direction anyway. Give us a sense of the process and again perhaps the, uh, the insight that the title gives us. Okay, so the, the, the size is explained by, the, it's just a, a, like the, a sheet of steel in Australia is, is eight feet by four feet. Um, that's without cutting it. So, um, you know, I, I find that's quite a good, good size to work with. Um, so that's why it's that big. And also, of course, with abstract work, you know, if it's really large, you've just got a whole lot more impact. Um, that piece doesn't involve much fire. Um, what I've done is, put a layer of heavily diluted white house paint um, on it. And then um, as that dries, the, the, the substrate will start to rust and, and that will leach through the white. So you get this underlay of, of patterns. And then, and then I think there's a whole lot of ink and a little bit of brushwork with acrylics. Um, and then it's finished off with um, like a layer of resin and the purpose of a clear resin. And the purpose of that is to uh, ensure that the underlying chemical reactions now cease so that instead of something which will continue to rust over time and eventually um, you know lose its coherence uh, it's kind of set in aspic mm. um, so so that yeah so that's that's how you finish it um, the title um, I mean the darling buds of May I think is from Shakespeare right um, and look the way that I title my works I, I, I don't start off with a title I I, I I produce it instinctively according to what looks good to me. And then when I've finished it, it's like, it's kind of like the discovery, the discoverer, the explorer in an undiscovered country. You, you see a landmark or something and you name it after something that it reminds you of. So um, if you look at that painting, there's, there's all sort of flowery bud-like structures on it. So that's why I called it that. You uh, mentioned the works being set in aspic uh, when yeah. you put that layer of resin on finally yeah. uh, it's yeah. an interesting culinary reference in a way do, do you see the the works as being like like an act of cooking like a, a recipe <laughs> that you're um, yeah somehow. <laughs> yeah in the sense that you know it's it's the the combat in, in cooking it's a combination of flavor and timing um and timing is very important with this because you, you have a reaction going on and you want to stop it or you want to speed it up or it's you know yeah, or, or, or you've got to set something on fire at just the right time. So, so yes, it, it is like cooking in, in the sense that you assemble different ingredients uh, according to, not so much according to a recipe, 
but according to your own instinct. Um, and then, you know, applying heat and, and different processes and timing, you, you end up with a result. Yeah. And in your case, I guess, sometimes literally you cook your paintings. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, <clears throat> moving to another work, uh, After the Fall, another example of utilising uh, some uh, extra elements uh, in mm. the work because this actually incorporates found glass on the surface, I believe. So yeah, I mean, there's, there, I mean, I like to include collage elements in into my work. Um, one thing is that it creates texture, um, and and the other thing is that it, yeah, it, it's just can be um, add to the to the visual impact. So yes, there's there's all, there's all bits of broken glass which I have fired or like they've been part of the the burning process. That that painting's got a lot of a lot of burnt oils in it um, and I've laid the glass onto the you know in amongst the sort of wet oil and then just ignited the whole thing and um, you know glass goes a very satisfying black when you burn it so you know. Uh, and there's uh, well there's some variations on the theme of black in uh, another work uh, Jun Khan one uh, yes. where there um, there are some elements of hardware circular elements that you've uh, attached to the yeah, so what they are. I mean, that, that was a, a piece where instead of having a one piece of steel, I cut up lots of different pieces of steel and then just stuck them together randomly. Or not, not exactly randomly, but somehow. Um, and then the cutting wheels that I used to cut them up, I just stuck them on as well because, I mean, they look like planets or something like that. And, and um, the, the client that had, had sort of commissioned this work wanted references to the moon. Um, in, in the piece and so I that's why I use them so on the one hand you've got like this sort of burnt silvery uh, color scheme which is like the moon a full moon and the other hand you've got um, this sort of you know artificially circular perfectly circular thing which is which is you know reusing the cutting wheel that I've used to cut up the, the steel you mentioned uh, a, a degree of randomness in the placement of some of those objects but if we uh, move to another work wormhole that has elements which are anything but random there's uh, yeah it's, it's, it's completely of, uh, copper wire geometrical. yes oh, sorry to cut across you Richard yes it's it's completely geometrical um in that piece um you know those, those copper wire pieces in general I I um work according to a formula uh, we string the wire up among at the border of the of the artwork you have um I have like um long bolts which Form like the framework for 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 a pattern of, of of wire. So you've got this very flowing organic artwork underneath, but above that there's this very formal geometric, you know, almost machine-like structure which forms a very interesting contrast um, to to the to the artwork underneath. Um, so it's like a marriage of completely different forms. Well, thank you for giving us those uh, insights into your thinking. And Simon Wilde, thanks for sharing your exhibition with us. Thank you very much, Richard.